words touched by soul. Growing up, I loved reading. I read everywhere. I read while I prepared tea. I read while I got ready to go to school in the morning. I read everywhere, literally everywhere. I know that I vexed my family a lot by the amount of time I spent reading. And if I wasn't reading, I was probably writing. I was also seen as a model child. The problem with being such a child, everybody thinks you have it all figured out. You're seen as secure, confident, and you can manage with little attention. Nobody thinks you have potential to self-destruct. Nobody thinks you have fear, anxiety, or self-doubt. You are, after all, a model child. I started thinking about my career when I was about 14 years old. Much as I loved and enjoyed the sciences, I leaned more towards the arts because I loved reading. And I knew I'd pursue a career in journalism or communications. But I was called for a degree in education. Clearly, if you love words, you must teach. God does have a sense of humor. In 1994, I was given the powers to read and to do all that pertains to a degree in education, and I was posted to Bura Girls High School in Taita Taveta District, now county. Of course, I was apprehensive about this move from Mombasa to a rural setting. And then, of course, I imagined this lack of basic amenities. You know those samosas from Stavros? <laughs> Anglo-Swiss Swiss rolls? And of course, Regal Movie Theater. My rural home, Mganganyika, is about six to eight kilometers away from Buramisha, where the school is situated. By then, my father had retired, and he was living and running a health clinic there. On the day of reporting, we boarded a bus with my father, and off we went to school. As we were walking to the school after we had gotten off from Bura Mission, the irony of being taken to my first job by my father hit me. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I should be having this warm, fuzzy feeling about this image we presented, or I should be embarrassed by it. Anyway, oblivious of my thoughts, we continued to the headmistress office, TSC appointment letter in hand, my father right behind. We went into the headmistress office, did the routine check, and off to the staff room we went. As we went to the staff room, me in this very special short skirt suit, but for this special occasion, my father right behind, we entered the staff room. And I was struck by this visual of teachers huddled around tables, cups of tea in their hand, and then brown covered books all over the place. These brown covered books, which were a source of were a routine in my student life, were suddenly so intimidating for me as a teacher. The look on the teacher's face, not to die for. I knew I had been judged. The Barbie doll had reported. <laughs> and if Sport Pesa was an up then, I'm sure they would secretly be betting how long I would have survived. The school environment is interesting. From a relationship dynamic, it's very, from a relationship perspective, it's very dynamic. You're constantly engaging with teachers and parents. And then you have the girls with their myriad of issues, especially since it was a girls' boarding school. But the joy for me in being in that environment was the raw honesty of the conversations you'd have with the people around you. But when it came to the teaching side of it, that was a killer for me. You can imagine, you have to teach the formation of the Rift Valley, and then you have to make that interesting. <laughs> And then you have to repeat this information every year because you have new students. This teaching routine was going to kill me. And fear set in for this city girl in me. At the end of the term, you're expected to go and collect your 
your, your salary in cash and in person from the district education office in Wundanyi, which was the county headquarters then, or the district headquarters then, before you got admitted into the payroll. So of course, with the new teachers who had just been appointed by TSC to the school, we boarded a bus off from Bura to Mwatate and then to Bundanyi. As we were walking to the DO's office, excited, you know, campus, fast salary, so with great plans of what to do with it. From the gate of the DO's office, I was struck by the sheer number of black mamba bicycles that had been packed in that compound and with locks. As if that was not enough, each one of them seemed to have like a three to five liter jerry can strapped on the side to it. I was intrigued. First, I had never seen so many black mambas in my life, in one place, even in a shop. Secondly, these jerry cans, what are they here for? What are they selling or buying? So innocently, I asked my colleague what was happening. Then he casually looks at me and says, ah, is it by skilling or limo So these bicycles were a means of transport for the teachers within their localities and of course to come to the county headquarters or the district headquarters. And then, as if that didn't shock me enough, there was a routine that was practiced soon after. So once you get your, your cash or your salary, they would ride with their bicycles to the local fuel station and then fill up these three to five liter jerry cans with kerosene because that's the ration for the month. Kerosene prices were quite high in the interiors, so this was a cost saving measure. I remember my salary was about 13,894 shillings. So any cost saving measure was welcome. And then, as soon as they had finished filling this kerosene, they'd find a local eatery right to the local eatery. If there was a madame who needed to be impressed, they'd buy her chips and chicken. <laughs> and depending on when this noble duty was achieved, they would either ride back to their localities or they would uh, hang out in Gundanyi town, awaiting to see how the night would unfold. This sight, the sight of these black mambas and the routine thereafter distressed me greatly. Now, it's only when you live in rural areas that you realize how important chiefs are. <laughs> this realization came to me when I took these girls for a sporting event in Voy Town. And as it is in such occasions, you have a high table, lots of soda and water bottles on it, and then you have a few people seated around it wait they, as they watch the games and then they're waiting for the moment when they'll be called to give prizes to the, to the winners. So every time I pass this table to talk to the MC who was next to it, there's this man seated there with a well-worn oversized suit that I clearly remember. <laughs> and he would ask me random questions like, when is the next race starting? So I'm thinking, surely you have a program. <laughs> or, aren't you tired of walking up and down? I think again, what's with this man? And then, so I give him some high sounding replies. So I go like, I will update you in case the program changes. Please use what you have now. Mm -hmm. Or, I am not tired of walking up and down. I mean, sports shoes. <laughs> Later. My colleague comes and tells me, ah, Madame Bogoli, naona chief akupi nafasi. Distress setting again. I'm thinking, me, a city girl, I'm being tuned by a chief. <laughs> Worse still, people can see. But it's okay if he was tuning me and no one was seeing, but people can actually see. What will I tell my friends? <laughs> the thoughts that ran through my head. Watch it. I knew then, if I did not take charge of that situation, 
this was going to be my reality. I needed to take matters into my hand to define the path that I felt was destined for me. <coughs> Teachers perform a noble task that often goes unappreciated. It takes a lot of commitment to the responsibility of molding these young, and young girls and boys to be the best of themselves. However, this was not for me. I knew I wanted different. I knew I wanted more. At the end of the term, school, uh, end of the term came, we closed school, home I went to my father, and I told him, this is it, I am not going back. So like any wise parent, he looked at me and asked, what's the plan? And of course, there was no plan. But I knew I was not going to settle for what was on offer then. I knew I wanted more. Fear is a terrible thing. Most of us fear to say no. Most of us fear to not conform to the world around us. Most of us fear to be different. Despite exuding confidence in this decision that I had taken, the fear of the unknown was within me. The thought of pulling a prodigal son move seemed like a very viable option to help me cut my losses as I thought through this next step that I so desperately needed. That school holiday, I read the classified ads in search of jobs because my life depended on it. I sent enough application letters that seemed to fall into this deep black hole because I don't even remember receiving responses to most of them, even the ones that I thought I was 100% qualified. Like all good hustling Kenyans, of course, I tried my hand at selling this and that, but the story of chasing payments from people is for another day. Fortunately, after a few months of search, I found a job with a local NGO as an administrator, and soon after I enrolled for my master's degree. I knew then that if I needed to advance in my career, I needed to invest in it and be able to get the growth that I desired and also be able to define the path that I felt was destined for me. <coughs> All said and done, what do I take out from my teaching sojourn? Just three months, by the way. <laughs> do not settle. Most of us settle out of fear. You can sense in your gut when things are not working for you. Run. Forget about having this plan B to fall back on when things are not working out. That plan will not unfold as long as you're in this situation. You need to change your environment to change your thinking. Secondly, keep working at it. You may not easily find what you're looking for. You may also need to go through several changes to be able to find what will work for you. Keep working at it. Remember, what the caterpillar considers the end of the world is the beginning of the butterfly. Whatever, as uncomfortable as it is for you, or as worried as you may be that things will not work out, it eventually does. And lastly, with the famous words from the poem Desiderata, keep interested in your career, however humble it is. It's a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Invest in it, grow in it, focus on doing what makes you happy. I'm currently working for an international NGO, where, and I run a multi-country program. I get to write a lot about the work we do and the impact we have on the people we seek to serve. But I also get to travel to the many places that the world of books opened up for me. Mm -hmm.